So I just wanted to share a quick video about maximizing the value of a company ready for sale and how to prepare it for sale. So um, to maximize the value of a business, what I tend to see in a lot of uh, SMEs is uh, business owners that are very heavily focused in the operations of a company. So in short, uh, dealing with staff and customers. And um, if you're in this position, then there is a lot of goodwill tied up in you as a business owner. And what you'll probably find is that when it comes to selling a business, um, any buyer will want to defer some of the payment or maybe um, put in some form of earnout um, because they don't want the risk of you leaving and then customers and staff um, leave also and that obviously diminishes the value of, um, of, of the business and potentially causes issues for the new owner. So one way to um, avoid this is to make yourself redundant from the business. So uh, in effect, build a management team that can run the company day to day, whether you show up or not. Um, so either that might be somebody internally today that could be promoted to the position of managing director, or it could be about bringing somebody into the company from outside with the right expertise to run um, the business. One other way to look at this um, could be to maybe merge with a competitor or related business where there is a managing director uh, obviously already in situ um, and then if there is any earn out uh, element of a of a deal then maybe this could be switched over to the uh, to the new md so first rule really would be to try and uh, make yourself redundant from the business and the second thing really is to get the finances in order it never ceases to amaze me um, when dealing with um, businesses that are uh, where an owner is looking to exit, where an owner is unable to produce up to date and accurate financial information and they have to rely heavily on their accountant who um, perhaps hasn't produced the figures as yet. So um, I'd strongly advise getting finances um, in order um, in house. So maybe you have an in house bookkeeper, for example. Um, fundamentally, the signs of a well run business is being able to lay your hands on up to date financial information. So um, in any of the businesses that I'm invested in, um, typically we are able to produce a balance sheet, a profit and loss, a debtor ledger, creditor ledger. So every week we can see what's in the bank, who we owe money to, who owes us money, and we can see the profitability position of the company and if you're able to produce that almost instantly then it, it gives a lot of confidence I would say to a buyer um, in that this must be a well-run um, company um, but obviously having up-to-date financial information is one of the key things that really most buyers are going to be interested in so making sure that if you're not in that position today that you have some sort of process or bookkeeping solution that enables you to be able to produce this information um, it's also really important to look at um, putting the company in the most profitable position. So if you take income, for example, you can treat this in three ways. You could look at um, past income. So you will raise an income and that will show as a sale on your P&L um, for anything that you've done in the past. You can also use it for um, uh, future um, uh, income. So, for example, let's say you're selling um, franchises and let's say there is an annual um, franchise fee uh, payable by um, one of your franchisees. Now you could treat that income as every time that they pay their invoice um, and it hits your bank account, you can record that as income. Um, you could treat it as income by raising the invoice and waiting for payment, um, so it will show as a debtor. Or you could treat that as an overall income over over a 12 month period, for example, um, which could massively inflate the P&L. Um, so for example, Let's say your annual license fee for a franchise is £50,000 and um, that's invoiced on the 1st of January. Um, but then maybe they, uh, the franchisee doesn't pay that um, all in one go. Maybe they pay it on a monthly basis of £4,000 or whatever um, every single month. You could include that in your accounts as a 4000 invoice every single month. And obviously, as each month goes by, that will be recorded as income. Or you could record the whole lot um, as one you know, £50,000 invoice on the 1st of January, which would obviously have a massive impact on the profit and loss. So um, having a look at your finances and being creative with them, so I'm not saying make figures up, but um, really making sure that your numbers are presented in the most um, effective way to um, really drive up the um, profitability. Um, one of the areas that potentially... Um, makes a lot of deals fall over is when we get to the due diligence piece. So a buyer will agree a deal with an owner and then you will find that um, they start doing the due diligence and then they'll use that process either to chip the price because they're not happy with what they find out um, or um, basically they, they don't proceed with the transaction. So um, if you can put yourself in a position where principally the majority of the due diligence is done in advance, so maybe set yourself up with a data room or an online um, sort of Dropbox type folder where you can scan 
all of the necessary um, legal documents, um, contracts, um, financial information, accounting records, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And clearly, this is quite a large um, exercise. But by doing that now and investing that time now means that when it does come to a sale and agreeing a deal, you can say to a would-be buyer, "We've already produced all of the due diligence documents. Here's access to the room. We we'll give you." two weeks, three weeks to review all of that, um, and then we want to move towards a, um, a successful completion. Um, time kills deals. The longer that they go on for, the longer negotiations go on for, more procrastinations happen, and the more chance there is of that deal falling through. So if you can be one step ahead of the buyer, um, that's going to put yourself in a, in a much stronger position to get the, not just the sale agreed, but obviously completed as quickly as possible. Um, once you've done all of those things, it, uh, I would then advise you to produce an information memorandum. So this is probably one sheet of A4 um, and it gives um, a, a very quick overview of the business. So what you do, what, what your unique selling points are, a um, bit of history to the business, um, what makes it valuable. Um, and maybe some consolidated financials, so a, a sort of headline profit and loss account and balance sheet. Um, and then that document can then be circulated in a confidential manner to potential buyers. So I would write a list of all the people that potentially might be interested in your company. So the natural thought would be maybe to go and look at a competitor. But you could also look at, you know, other um, um, vertical um, type um, buyers. So maybe they're not in the same business as you, but they might and be interested to um, acquire you because there might be synergies between the two and um, the two businesses so for example I was involved in a marketing company they were a brand marketing agency um, and they um, they did a deal with a PR company um, and the synergies naturally were the PR clients could sell brand marketing work and, and vice versa so um, it made a lot of sense so look for competitors look for possible vertical um, uh, acquirers um, but also don't forget your customers and suppliers um, you know could a customer want to buy you and um, could one of your suppliers want to buy you so write a long list of potential targets and then it's either a question of you approaching them directly obviously in a confidential way um, or because of issues of confidentiality getting a third party to do that so that could be a business broker or it could be a specialist corporate advisor M&A firm private equity house um, that can position your business and with potential acquirers in a confidential manner and without breaching obviously you know you you don't want your customers and staff to know that you're uh, potentially looking to exit and um, so it can all be done in a, in a confidential way and um, so hopefully you found this video useful um, and if anybody's got any queries or want some help in trying to exit from their business then do